In this video, we are going to cover how to populate the mission and cost analysis template. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is populate the first nine tabs of this document. The first nine tabs are really the meat and potatoes of this document, and all of the report tabs after that will self-populate based on the data given in the first nine tabs. So specifically in this video, we're going to focus on tab number one, which covers program setter information. Before we get into that information, though, it's important to know this cell right here needs to be changed to whatever local YMCA you are at. So this could be Helena Family YMCA, Billings Family YMCA, etc. But that's important because when you go onto the tab or the report tabs, it's going to self-populate to say Helena Family YMCA instead of a generic local Family YMCA. So back to tab one, we're looking at program center information. In column B, the first thing that you're going to fill out on this tab is what program centers are active at your local YMCA. This includes things like membership, after school care, preschool, summer day camp, etc. Once those programs are filled out, you're going to move on to column C, which indicates whether the program is bundled in membership. If the program is bundled in membership, such as Child Watch, you'll indicate that with a one in the cell that corresponds to Child Watch. Otherwise, you will leave it blank. Moving on to column D, which is the number of enrollments in that program. This is just the raw number of members and non-members that are enrolled in a program. This is important because some things like volleyball or soccer may have non-members that are included in the enrollment. Finally, column E covers mission impact rating. This is going to depend on your local YMCA and how closely you think a program meshes with your mission. But if it is a first priority program, you are going to indicate that with a one here. And if it is a second priority program, you will indicate that with a two. That's pretty much it for tab number one. And in the next video, we will cover tab number two, which is program spaces.